Growing up, Grant's sugar rockets were my all-time favorite T-Core video. So I'm gonna upgrade it by making the very first ever T-Core dual stage rocket. Now I'm not a rocket scientist, so there was a lot of trial and error. But I was able to scrap together this design that you can build in your garage. So the design for this rocket is pretty simple. I'm basing it off of Grant's original five inch by three quarter inch PVC rocket engine. And then I built my second stage, which is made of a half inch PVC that slides in on top of that. And I'll walk you through how we're gonna make this. We're gonna need some three quarter inch schedule 40 PVC, as well as some half inch schedule 40 PVC. We're gonna cut these into different lengths. So our three quarter inch is gonna be cut into five inch motors, while our half inch is gonna be cut into three inch motors. Now the last thing we need to do to get the final build is bevel down our half inch PVC pipe so they can fit inside of our three quarter. Next, we wanna make a clay plug. So we just have some unscented kitty litter, which is bentonite clay, that we're gonna grind up and smash down. Now the reason that we wanna grind this is that we want it to be fine so that it packs better. The bigger chunks that you have, the easier it's gonna be for them to fall apart. The smaller pieces that you have, the tighter it's gonna pack. Now that we've made our clay, we need something to pack it in with. So we're gonna use this oak dowel rod that's three quarters diameter, and we're gonna cut this down to the exact measurements that we need. Now, what we want to do is we wanna have three quarters inches uh, gap at the top so we can fit our second stage on top of that. Then next, we wanna do three quarters of an inch of plug on either side. This is our measurement rod. So we've got our clay. Now we just need to pour it into our rocket tube. So here we can see, I'm not quite up to my mark yet, but that's the purpose of the marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight good wax should give you a nice plug. And then just rinse and repeat until you get up to your line. All right, so that is all of our boosters done, which are just Grant's original rocket designs. They're all plugged, but now we're gonna go to the upgraded version, which is our half inch second stage. In Grant's original design, he left that three quarters inch so that you could put an ejection charge for your parachute, which is what we're taking advantage of for our ejection charge for our second stage. But since the second stage is the end, and I'm not planning on putting a classic parachute on it, we can actually fill this up with more fuel, so I don't need that extra space. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark our three inches, and then we just need to mark a half inch beneath that and a half inch from the bottom. So we can have a half inch of clay that caps both ends. And we've got our dough. All right, so we've got all of our rocket bodies capped with clay. Now the next part is to fill them with our rocket fuel. So we're gonna use Grant's original recipe, which called for 35% by weight powdered sugar mixed with 65% by weight potassium nitrate. And we want these to be as thoroughly mixed as we can so that our oxidizer, potassium nitrate, is interspersed between all of our sugar to help it burn evenly. Now it's time for my favorite part, short of shooting the rockets. We gotta test that our rocket fuel works. Now, as I said, the potassium nitrate on its own, not super flammable. It's just an oxidizer. So even if I leave this flame over top of it, it doesn't have enough heat in order to make it reactive. The sugar, on the other hand, it is flammable, but without that oxygen to increase the combustion reaction, it wants to just caramelize and melt. Now, if I leave this long enough, it'll eventually start to burn and it'll turn black. So science nerd time, this sugar here is sucrose, which is just made up of a bunch of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. So those carbons are what are actually going to burn and the oxygen helps fuel the combustion. But now let's see what happens when we mix those carbons of the sugar with the oxidizer of our potassium nitrate, giving it a little bit extra oxygen eat. So when it comes to making our rocket, we're gonna go ahead and make a new funnel because we don't wanna contaminate any of our rocket fuel with any of the clay from the old one. And then we'll just use that same dowel rod and continue to pack it down bit by bit until we hit our next clay mark. So there we have it, our two rockets are finished. 
We have our Grant original, which will serve as our booster, but instead of a parachute charge, it's going to ignite our second stage, which will then fly away. The last thing we have to do is we have to put some nozzles into this. So for our five inch by three quarter inch, we're going to use this 730 seconds bit. Rather than going all the way through like this, I'm gonna come about this far. So we'll mark that. So now I'm also going to drill a hole in the top because what I'm gonna be using to time the ejection of the second stage is a fuse. So I want a hole that's gonna go into here so as this burns, it'll ignite the fuse, which will then ignite our second stage. As you notice, on the bottom, I drilled our hole directly in the center. But on the top, I drilled our shallow hole off to the center. This is because I wanna wait until all of the fuel started to burn to the side before I ignite my fuse. And for our half inch by three inch, we're gonna use this 1164 spit. And for this one, since there's no second stage, we can core this all the way through. So our very last step before we assemble it is to add our fuse. We're gonna use some quick fuse to ignite our second stage from our booster. And there we go. Our rockets are pretty much done. So this is Utah, so I can't just light off a rocket anywhere because it'll set the whole state on fire. So rather than driving two hours away to test it, I invited a rocket scientist over here who has his own test stand so we can test this right here in our backyard. All right, so this is our test stage, also known as a thrust stand. And what this allows us to do is test out our rockets here on the ground versus having to shoot them up. So the way that this works is that we'll ignite our rockets, which will push against this thing known as a load cell. That load cell will then measure the amount of force that our engine is putting off and transmit that to our computer so we can measure the amount of thrust that we have and use that to calculate how powerful our rocket is and hopefully how high it's gonna go. So all of this was made not by me because clearly I am not a rocket scientist. Instead, our mastermind and resident rocket scientist, amateur rocketeer and aerospace engineer, Doug Hilson created this for us so that we could use this to test out our rockets. Huge thanks to him. All right, this is the moment of truth. Does our two-stage rocket design work? Three, two, one. Yes! Oh, no two second delay. Woo! Oh, okay, we have a design. We have a design and it works. Ah, is this what rocket scientists feel like? <laughs> All right, NASA, hire me. All right, first and foremost, have to give another huge thanks to Doug because this was amazing. We got so much cool science and math and data out of this, but also it allowed us to test our rockets without having to shoot them up. Now we know that they work. The next step, to see how high they go. So I was up all night building these very functional rockets. And I was up all night decorating these rockets. You work how you dress and we want these guys to work well. ka -chow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you've worked so hard on getting these rockets together. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, my hands hurt. <laughs> So where are we starting? How are we getting there? What are we doing? All right, so my thought was, first of all, to pay honor to Grant's amazing rocket, which uh -huh. inspired me, is we're actually gonna launch one of his original ones just to see how high it goes. And then we'll fire our second stage, see how high that goes on its own, and then... Combine them. Yeah. Sweet, I like it. Let's do it. Rocket time. Rocket man. I don't know. How's it work? How's, how do you do the thing? Oh wait, oh, it's showing your head. Oops. Oh gosh, it's gonna hit the gas station! No! You did it! Hey! That was awesome! <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Well, I mean, I guess we kind of knew that that was gonna work. Yeah, that went way high. I didn't think they went that high. So the second stage, according to Doug's calculation, is a little bit smaller. It's gonna be equivalent. That should have been an E motor. Uh -huh. This is gonna be a C motor. And the, the grade just means how long it burns, so the duration of it. Cool. And like the numbers that you add is the average thrust that's put out, so. Sweet. Yeah. Let's get it. Get her going. Thank goodness for cameraman Mark who brought actual rocket fuses because it is a little windy to light our cannon fuse. Cameraman Mark rescues everything. Hey! It goes pretty straight too! Oh my gosh! It's gone! Where'd it 
it go? It's coming back down, actually. I can see the stick. Oh gosh, not the truck, not the truck. Oh. I heard the thud. Hey! <laughs> now let's combine them! I have a lot of confidence now. I do too. I came into this with like 80% confidence. I'm feeling a good 92%. Hey, that's an A. Hey, that, that is an A. <laughs> I am equal parts terrified and excited. I was gonna say, what are the chances this thing blows up like the last couple ones did? Ah, uh, equally high, because I built all of them. Three, two, one. <gasps> the second one. It happened. Did it go? I think it launched the second one. I think this is fall it's falling, or is that the first? Oh, I think this is the baby one. Look at it. Would Dunning you look to at the it? Ground. Oh yeah, that's hot, yeah, see, that's toasty. See how that's still warm? Yeah, and this that. one's not. So I just don't think we got good ignition. I think, well, we can test if this ignited. The By hole, lighting it? Yeah, the hole still seems open, so let's just see if we can. Light it? Yeah, this is science on the fly. Did the thing work? I don't know. Let's try to light it. Let's poke it. <laughs> oh. oh, it's over that way somewhere. Uh, so that just didn't fire, which just means that our fuse probably didn't do a good job, which means that out of like the eight or nine more rockets, one of them has to do One of them's gonna work. Three, two, one. Oh, geez. <laughs> well, no questions about that. The second one ignited. Um, probably should have clarified it needed to go up and then ignite. Next. Lightning McQueen don't stick out, Mark. Are they too heavy with the fins? I th that's what I'm thinking. I'm wondering if it's just taking them even longer to lift. That's my guess. Let's rip off some fins. Oh, wait, oh, wait. There we go. <laughs> yes! Yes! You want to use the last bit of sunlight to just launch a oh, couple yeah, we more? Yeah, just gotta launch a couple of them. There's the Woo! second one. That's two in a row. We know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. <laughs> Wait for it. Oh my gosh. Oh! <laughs> To be honest, took out the drone. <laughs> That's legit. This was Ooh. awesome. Like literally 10 out of 10. I cannot believe it worked. Uh, we killed it today. This was, yeah, this is everything I was hoping it was gonna be. It was awesome. But real talk, this is super special to me because the very first King of Random video that I ever saw and then tried to replicate was making these sugar rockets. And so it is just absolutely crazy to be back here on the channel. Yeah. Getting to play with the thing that inspired me. And to you made it. Do rockets. You upgraded it. That's, That's what science is all about. True come true. I can I can die happy now. I mean. I'm out. Peace. Okay. Life accomplished. Have fun getting your rocket. Yep, I'm done. <laughs> See you never. He, he literally goes back to Chicago tomorrow. <laughs> Guys, I spent a lot of time in the garage, pounding, sawing, and really just making a lot of noise. And I have to say that the noise isolation from Raycons was great. It let me really hone in on my building instead of being distracted by the noise around me. Plus, listening to my music was awesome. Raycons come with a ton of different gel tips for comfort, and unlike other brands, they don't stick out of your ears. They have 32 hours of battery life and start at half the price of other premium audio brands. But the sound is just as good. I love that they come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash TKOR to get 15% off your purchase. That was sensational! I'm freaking rocket scientist! Yeah, you are! Yes! Woo! Woo! I'm pretty sure that's how they feel in Houston. Like, Houston, yeah. we have takeoff. They're like, ah! Oh 
the sun was setting. We sent a rocket. We saw stage one. We saw stage two. The drone is now landing. This is perfect. 